Mother St. John Fonfon was a key person in this history. She played a crucial role. Mother St. John was so strong. She was a wise woman, and we quote her more than anybody because we know more about it, the more things were written at that time. People flocked to her leadership because she was that kind of person. She was brave, she was centered, she was kind, she was funny. Her example has provided a lot of strength for women religious today. I mean, just look at Mother Margaret Brady's. That was difficult to start the mount on the top of a hill without much help from clergy or anybody else. She did that. And Mother St. John provided an example of going out and doing what our founder told us to do, and that was to meet the needs of now. She's an extraordinary leader, and we look to her as, a, as an example of what leadership grounded in gospel values looks like. Mother St. John was born in Bassin Basse. It's a small village where she grew up in a very loving family, a very faithful family. She had two sisters and a brother. She and her sister Marie both became sisters of St. Joseph. And so Mother St. John, whose birth name was Jean, was recognized at a young age as being a joyful young girl with a strong personality, uh, but a very loving personality. And she was encouraged in her vocation from a young age. They had two aunts who were sisters of St. Joseph who also encouraged them to enter. And they go to Monastral for their formation as sisters of St. Joseph. When Jean Fontbonne becomes a sister, she takes the name Sister St. John. And at the age of 26, these uh, leadership skills that she has are, are recognized. And as a young woman, she is elected superior of a community in Monastral. One of the ministries of Mother St. John in Monastral was that she founded a workshop for local women. And she invited women of all different socioeconomic classes to come together during the day to work on various projects, to share in faith and to build community. And it was quite remarkable that she would bring together women of different social classes at that time. And it was an expansion of the hospital and school that the sisters ministered in. And the bishop, Bishop de Gallard, who was a big supporter of Mother St. John, invited her to bless the cornerstone of that new workshop. This is in the 1780s. Quite unusual that a bishop would have a woman, a sister, do a public blessing of a cornerstone. That's how remarkable she was and how beloved she was and how respected she was at that time. During the French Revolution, uh, when they closed all the convents and they closed all of the churches and the priests could not wear their religious garment, the nuns could not wear their religious garments, and a lot of the nuns and priests were put in prison. A number of our sisters were put into prison. The French Revolution is a major turning point in the history of France. The revolutionists saw the current monarchy and the Roman Catholic Church as being corrupt and as favoring those who were wealthy and those who were privileged. And so the revolutionists began to persecute the church. And while there probably were many cardinals and other parts of the Roman Catholic hierarchy that were part of that upper class, the sisters certainly were not uh, a part of those kinds of uh, systems. And in fact, were serving the people. But because they were Catholic communities, they were caught up. Um, in the persecution, and they were given a choice. All uh, priests and nuns were given a choice at that time to take the oath of the Constitution to the new revolutionist government, or to remain faithful to Rome, and if they remained faithful to Rome, then they could be arrested, imprisoned, and ultimately guillotined. And this was called the Reign of Terror. At that time, all religious men priests and vowed uh, women religious are told that they must swear an oath of allegiance to the revolutionary government and they must deny their faith and their connection to Rome and the Catholic Church. Many succumb to this because the, the penalty for not taking the oath is imprisonment and probably the guillotine. Mother St. John refuses. And there is a moment in her history which stands out where she is dragged in with other sisters to the church at Monistrol, where the priest has taken the oath of allegiance and has disavowed his connection to the Catholic Church in Rome. And they are told that they must do the same in front of 
the town. I always think of that moment because she is there and she either has to deny her faith and by doing so would save her own life and the life of the sisters in her care. Or she refutes, stands up for her faith and knows that she has just put herself and the lives of the sisters in her care at risk. And she stood up and refused. And that to me is the sign of an incredibly courageous leader and says that there is no violence you can bring to us that would make us deny our faith. Ultimately, they were expelled from Monastral for being defiant. The convents are all shut down. She goes home and brings several sisters, including her biological sister Marie, to the house in basson -Basse. They hide there. Her whole family was involved in trying to support the underground church. They hid priests and nuns who were ministering in secret. And eventually the soldiers come and they are ready to search the house, which they had done a number of times, but they never discovered who was hiding. This time she knew they would find a priest hiding and she was worried about the priest's life and her father could be imprisoned for hiding these individuals. So she and her sister go into the street and surrender to the guard. So Mother St. John and several other sisters were imprisoned in Saint Didier in Valais. Mother St. John and her sisters fully expected to be martyred. They thought they would go to the guillotine. And in fact, five sisters of St. Joseph were martyred at the guillotine in the French Revolution. And so they prepared themselves spiritually to be killed. And Sister St. John was supposed to be beheaded the next morning. That morning, Robespierre was overthrown. The political landscape was shifting, and Robespierre, who was sort of the master of this reign of terror, was overthrown. And the next day, instead of going to the guillotine, they were set free. And this was totally unexpected, and it was quite a shock, and it's really, uh, we talk about it as a bit of a miracle to this day, because it meant Mother St. John survived, as did her sisters. Her blood sister was in prison with her, her aunt was in prison with her, and they all were able to go back to the family home. The French Revolution continued. Um, the church was not restored for several more years. In the early 1800s, you have the Concordat with Napoleon, who reestablishes the terms of which the Catholic Church can be established again in France. So Mother St. John stayed home for 12 years until about 1806. That was a, a time where she was with her family and cared for her aging parents. She continued to minister to the community as a catechist and provided religious education and probably was in contact with, with her sisters.